So church, we're just still discussing the second man from heaven. Our text has came from 1 Corinthians 15, 43 through 47, talking about the second man from heaven. The first Adam was a living soul. The first Adam, it talks about, wasn't the natural man. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And what Jesus Christ came to do was to demonstrate how the first man, Adam, Jesus, the natural man, could live by the faith of the Son of God, Christ in him, the hope of glory. He came to reveal who Christ is and that name, the complete name, which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. So you can go back and read 1 Corinthians 15, 43 to 47, talking about the natural and spiritual. Because the devil's pulled the wool, so to speak, over the eyes of man's understanding. I hath not seen, ear and hear. Man cannot comprehend. You need someone to unveil this. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Who's on the other side of the veil? So let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. And I'm and 313 talks about, and not as Moses would put a veil over his heart, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Remember after the Lord's resurrection, the veil of the temple was rent in two. Matthew 27 tells you that. At the end of Christ is able to take you beyond the veil. When you when that veil is done away, when the wool or the veil is not on the as we're gonna see, is not covering your eyes or your face anymore, you're able to see who's on the other side of the veil which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. It's a spiritual veil. So it takes a spiritual veil being with the sword of the spirit to cut away that spiritual veil. The veil is upon out. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with an open face or an unveiled face are beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. I change it to the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, from glory to glory, from the natural to the spiritual realm. Now Moses' face shined when he went up to get the commandments, the Ten Commandments. His face was reflecting. Now the light's shining from within. And you see that as you continue in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. So he's kind of got the wool over their eyes. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. That's what we, that's our calling here, is to preach the doctrine of Christ. To let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ enlighten you. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, because right now the veil is upon the eyes of your understanding. He's pulled the wool over your heart. Lest the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's showing you who the second man from him, Jesus Christ, has shined in our hearts, the light to shine out of darkness. Take note of the fact in verse 6, they use the term the face of Jesus Christ. You know, why, why would it be the face? For anybody who's watched mystery movies or, or you know, you see somebody from behind you, you don't know who they are until you can see the face. The face tells you who the person is. The face is located on the head. Well, who's the head? Christ is the head of the church. He's the second man from heaven. He's the son of God. 
He's the one God sent. The Bible is very clear. You can read the book of John. God sent his only begotten son. That's why this doctrine of Jesus was God is blasphemous because they're worshiping the creation more than the creator. Somebody is left out of the, out of, uh, the teaching. They acknowledge God and they acknowledge Jesus, who was the son of man, the first Adam. But they're forgetting, they're leaving out the most, one of the most important parts of this, which is Christ, the second Adam, the second man from heaven. That's why your Bible says that it's Antichrist. In these last days, it's Antichrist. Why is it Antichrist? Because it keeps, without seeing who Christ is and understanding who you are in Christ, it's a mystery. You're in blindness. Romans 11.25 talks about that, that it's a mystery because blindness is part and happening to Israel until the fullness of the gospel brought in, the fullness of the agenda, which is Christ. It's a blinding doctrine. But the face of Jesus Christ reveals who the Son is. Then you know who he is because the veil is done away. In a wedding or you know, anybody who, who wears a veil, you can tell there's a person there, but you can't tell who they are until that veil is done away and you go, oh, now I know who that is. You see that, you see that uh, people that pull off a heist, they wear a mask, so they don't, but once that's done away, you can tell who they are. The devil wears a lot of masks and the people are, are blinded as well until they know who Christ is and that mask is done away. You go, oh, that's, that's not a godly doctor. And I listen to a lot of stuff today you know, we've got a lot of people playing dancing with the stars. Well, I think something's happening, but I won't say, but yes, it is, but no, it won't. Well, they're tap dancing back and forth. I don't want to hear what people think. I won't tell me what you know. I'm just given to know the mystery of the gospel. I want to know what you know. Not what you think, not what somebody else. I want to know what you know. And the only way you're going to know anything is if you get the veil off the heart. Then you're going to know who you, then you're going to know who the Son of God is, which is Jesus Christ, Christ in you. Ephesians 5, excuse me, Ephesians 4, and verse 17, this I say, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth from this point forward not, don't walk anymore as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. Bible says, Christ, who is our life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What, what is he, the, the way? Well, he's the way to the Father. The truth sets you free so that you can have life in heaven more abundantly. Not strife, not doubt, not confusion, not fear. A perfect love casts out all fear. The understanding darkened from the life of God to the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. So there's still a veil there. Who be in past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greed. Well, that sounds like the modern day supposed version of the church. You know, write the check and everything's good. It had nothing to do with studying to show thyself, dying daily, uh, dying to self, look not every minute. Also, it was just write the check and life is good. Kick back and for the next 12 months you can do what you want. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard of him and taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. See, the truth was in Jesus, which is Christ. That's why Jesus of Nazareth was able to walk in the truth and do those things that were pleasing in his father's sight because the veil was done away in his life, which was by Christ, the second Adam, that you put off concerning the former conversation or manner of life, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, so the old man can be tempted and fall into sin. Jesus was tempted in every man, every way as we are, yet sin not. Because of Christ in him, he was able to see how to overcome the flesh, which folks, many times, we are our worst enemies. We have to overcome ourselves <laughs> and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What happens when you're renewed in the spirit of mind? 1 Corinthians 2.16 tells you at the end of the chapter, you have the mind of Christ. And that you put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness 
and true holiness. There's a new man. The new man is the second man from heaven, Christ, which being in Jesus, inside of Jesus, was a complete package, which showed him how to live a life without sin. You need that second Adam. You need to understand who he is. He has a name. Well, let's see what he's had to say about that name in John 17. Folks, if it doesn't involve Christ, if the teachings, the preachings, your prayers doesn't include Christ, it's not of God. And if somebody doesn't know the doctrine of Christ and the mystery of the gospel, they have no business being in a pulpit preaching. That's why we have all this nonsense we see out there. John 17, 1, these words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. But Jesus had a father. Many times in the Bible, Paul began his writings. Peter, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've mentioned this time again that there is to us but one God and one Father. It tells you that in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. He has a Father. Christ, Jesus Christ has a Father. Uh, the Father said that in, uh, at the Transfiguration in Matthew 17, 2. A God who cannot lie looked down and said, this is my beloved son. And he didn't say, this is me. He said, this is my beloved son. And yet we, people have the audacity to call Jesus, say Jesus was God, when he said he had a father. When are we going to let God be true and man the liar? Well, when you get rid of the veil and the blindness, then you're going to be able to see the truth, and the truth will set you free. And you have given him power over all flesh. You have that power too. Christ is the power and wisdom of God. It tells you that. I'm uh, 1 Corinthians 1.24. 1 Corinthians uh, one thirty one talks about Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. You take the power and wisdom off the table, you ain't got nothing left. You just got empty, watered-down, wishy-washy doctrines. And you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And Jesus Christ. That's the complete package. That describes the first man, Adam, Jesus, which is natural, the second man, the Lord from heaven, Christ. The Lord himself said that. You can, and you can read this whole chapter. I mean, it's interesting. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men. What name? What's the name above all name? Jesus Christ. Jesus is not the sweetest name, and Jesus is a common name. Jesus, you know, it's just like in the world, your first name describes is a common name. It describes many other people. But when you mention the complete name, then they go, oh, that's from that family lineage. That describes one person. Jesus Christ describes the family lineage. He's the son of God. He told you that. He's the second Adam. Verse 8, you can go down. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received and have known surely that I have come out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. He was sent from God. So that we would know the truth, and the truth would set you free. You need to know who the second Adam is. And it can only be... And you know, whenever you see the word revelation, which means to unveil, it tells you who was unveiled. Matthew 16, 18. Blessed art thou son, flesh and blood is not revealed. You can read and you can do your own homework. In Ephesians 3, 1 through 5, talks about this name which is revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. What is revealed? And we'll close here in um, Galatians. Um, at Paul's conversion in Acts 9, 2 is another good example where well, okay, we'll go to Acts 9 real quick here. 
I mean, the verses just keep, the Bible just keeps confirming itself over and over again. Acts 9.15, the Lord spoke to Ananias to go pray for Paul. Ananias is like, but I've heard so many things about this guy. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him what, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And then you get down to verse 20, right after the scales fell off of Paul's eyes in verse 18. In other words, kind of being un, what was unveiled. All of a sudden, the eyes was understanding and light. Wow, they used the term scales. Paul wrote about in Ephesians 1, uh, 3, well, it, blessed be to God, Father, 118, he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Verse 1, 3 in Ephesians, he said, Bless, um, blessed be to God, Father, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And the scales fell. And when he had received meat and was strengthened, then was Paul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. All of a sudden, Paul was enlightened, and his ministry involved the second Adam, which he described in, in the book of Corinthians, which is where we started this whole. So in conclusion, in, in uh, Galatians 1, And it would do you well, again, to read this whole chapter because he's, he's talked about in verse 6, I marvel your soul soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. That's Antichrist. Antichrist. He that denies the Son hath not the Father. He that denies the Father hath not the Son. He's Antichrist. 1 John 2 tells you that. It's Antichrist. Well, of course the devil wants you to deny it, because then you can't. The eyes, you're still in blind. You're still in darkness. You have the blind leading the blind. And in verse 10, For I do not seek to please men or God. If I seek to please men, I, sh I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me was not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I, was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The unveiling of, of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul was used so mightily by the Lord. Verse 15, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, in me. And we talked about that in Ephesians, you have not so learned Christ, so he heard the truth is in thee. That's where the revelation comes. That's where the light shines now, in the heart. And it, the sword of the Spirit cuts that veil, runs that veil, so you can see who's on the other side of the veil. For my mother, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So folks, what I'm telling you today is, don't settle for what people tell you. What is, what is God saying through his word? Who is he revealing? Who's the son? Who's the son of God, the second Adam? He's the one that's going to reveal, pull the, pull the veil away, and show you who you really are in Christ. And so that you can know surely and not guess. Perfect love casts out all fear. Second, the second man from heaven. Concentrate on that truth.